Oh, look what I think this is. Uh-huh. This box is huge. I just got my first Hot Toys action figure delivered and inside an Ahsoka Tano figure. But here's the thing, I've never collected Hot Toys before and I know nothing about Hot Toys. So today we learn the history of Hot Toys and I unbox this figure and try to set it up. Am I supposed to cut this off? Oops, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. This is a series dedicated to the myth the canon, the action figures, and the future of Ahsoka Tano. Welcome to the Ahsoka Chronicles. I know Jedi. I'm an action figure collector, but I've only really ever collected Kenner, Hasbro, and Funko. I mean, come on, how could you not like Funko? But every time I've gone to a toy show, a toy shop, or even some of my friends' houses, I've seen these gorgeous one six scale figures that are sculpted to look exactly like they jumped off of the screen of the movie. And maybe I'm a little late to the party, but as a vintage collector, I've never gotten my hands on these before. I guess this changes today, but I had no idea until this year of who Hot Toys was. So before I dive in and open this, I wanted to know what the heck is Hot Toys and where did they come from? So I'm gonna take you into the past and let you know the history of Hot Toys. The year was 1998, where we find a screenwriter for a Hong Kong TV station, Howard Chan, but his passion was always toys. So that year, he leaves his job at the TV station to start an action figure shop in Causeway Bay that he named Cool Toys. At that time, there were six scale toys being made, but Chan thought that there could still be major improvements made in the detail of the sculpts, the materials that were used, and the level of screen accuracy to match the figure exactly. So he decided to roll up his sleeves and turn a dream into a plastic reality. His first attempt was in 1999, but there was a problem. He didn't have any licensing rights to produce figures from any movies, TV shows, video games, books, anything. But that didn't stop him. So under the name Famous Type, he released an unnamed 1-6 scale action figure that bore a striking resemblance to Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt from the Mission Impossible movie that was first released in 1996. And later that year, he released the maker, George Lucas himself, as a homage that he named the director. And then the uber popular Neo from the Matrix, again with no license. But in 2000, Chan started including the name Hot Toys with the flame icon in the branding. And it's never changed. A big year was 2003, where they began acquiring licenses to produce characters from movies. At first, they produced highly detailed soldiers from the Iraq War, Vietnam, and Afghanistan Wars. During this time, though, Hot Toys was still producing and selling sculpts of unlicensed famous movie stars. And with those and the amazing detailed soldiers that they were creating, collectors around the world were starting to take notice. And these figures started popping up everywhere, from toy shows to the internet and... It was at this time that Hot Toys took the biggest leap forward, acquiring the biggest licensable toy franchise ever, Star Wars. With Chan being a huge Star Wars fan, his dreams were realized, and his chance to create figures the way he always wanted to make them was there. Hot Toys would also partner with Sideshow Collectibles to produce Marvel and DC figures as well. And if you see their current list of licensed franchises, it looks like the homepage of HBO Max. Virtually every single IP from any line in popular culture, they make it. Howard Chan is still CEO and still in charge, and his vision remains the same to produce the most accurate and well-adapted figures from the page and screen into the hands of collectors. By the way, that first action figure, Ethan Hunt, if you have around 20 to $30,000, that could be in your collection. So I decided to get a hot toy figure of my own, the Ahsoka Tano 1-6 scale action figure from her Clone Wars appearance, and this is from their television masterpiece series. I placed $25 down to hold the pre-order and I got an email saying that it would be delivered to me in March and I would be billed for the full amount with the $25 deposit included on that final total. And in April, there was an email delivered to me saying that there was a delay in production and that my order was still active. 
And the only reason why I didn't get mad was because I know that these things are hand painted, are handcrafted, and the detail that these artists put into their work. I know that I was getting something special, but July 6th came around and I got another email saying that my order was processing. And then a few days later. All right, so here it is. And this being my first time ever owning or even opening a Hot Toys figure. I guess I have to learn how to unbox it and I have to learn how to set it up and how to pose these things. So I guess the good thing is, is that you're gonna get a first take review from a person who has never handled a Hot Toys item before. So if you've always wanted to get into these and you want an honest review, this would be it. Let's do this. So the first thing I noticed is that there's a 10% QR code. I guess so you can scan this and get 10% off your next purchase. Uh, so I guess we'll see how this goes. And uh, if I wanna buy again, Let's dig right in and I have no idea which side to open it on so I guess I'm gonna open it on the side right side up I think this is it so we'll do it this way and I'm gonna be super careful lightly perforate it because I've never opened one of these before so if you've never had a hot toy before uh, yeah watch this because then uh, you'll know what it takes looking like I can just slide this out from here Wow, we will hold on to this. Let's take off the plastic. It is real. The box has a very high quality black matte finish and a premium feel to it. It's about the size of a large shoe box. The front art has a close up photo of the action figure and below that raised gold lettering of the Star Wars logo. At the bottom of the box art is a heavy paper ribbon with a picture of the action figure hooded and information of the figure inside. This ribbon wraps around the entirety of the lid with one side of the ribbon having the same text info as the front and the other side of the ribbon having a wider shot of the action figure in a neutral pose. The back of the box has the name title and figure number and under that a list of credits, license and partner recognitions. And then at the bottom, warnings and compliance legal in the small print. To open the box, lay it down and slide the front cover off. On this side of the box, we have Ahsoka Tano art and it's a beautiful photograph of her in action. I'm already liking what I see because the art and the way that they present it to a collector who's opening up for the first time, great presentation. So you can slide off the art that is covering the inside tray. Taking off the inner box art reveals the plastic trays that contain the figure, base, and accessories. I feel like I'm exploring the pyramids and excavating somebody's tomb. That's what it feels like. Let's go over what's inside the box. On the top of the tray, you'll find two Ahsoka Tano Clone Wars lightsabers with long blue blades and a short blue blade already inserted into the two hilts. You'll also find two action blades, one short and one long. There's some great weathering on these hilts as well. Very lifelike. Although they're plastic, they do look absolute metal. In the same removable tray, five extra hand poses. It's like the thing. Two saber holster pegs and two extra hand pegs. Access the main plastic cover by lifting it off from the black plastic base. Inside, three great looking holograms of Anakin, Yoda, and Obi-Wan from their Clone Wars likenesses. You'll also find a hologram transmitter. So if we put one on, and then I guess Ahsoka can hold this in her hand. A thermal detonator with some very nice detail added to it. So I have no idea what this is. It looks like her intergalactic toothbrush. No idea what that's for, but we'll find out. It's to move her eyeballs, and I'll show you that in a bit. And her soft goods cape that has wires running throughout to hold motion. The material feels nice. Not too flowy, but not too heavy. The color and pattern look very natural as well. There is also a plastic base that has some added weathering on the top, a nice touch, and a plastic nameplate. The black wire figure holder is the waist clasp instead of the crotch clasp. So it's not a durable stand. It's a very lightweight, even though it is a nicely designed stand, it is a very, very lightweight stand. Don't step on it. Do not drop it because it will crack. So far, so good. A lot of accessories. If I was a kid, a little kid, I would have lost these the first moment I opened it up. So now let's get to the action figure. I guess you would say the most important thing. So removing the action figure, there is plastic surrounding her boots, her hands, and her head. I'm guessing the objects that can get scuffed up in transit. These are the things that you don't want to get ruined, so I'm glad that they covered these portions up on her. And before you handle this figure, make sure to wash and dry your dirty Wookiee hands. Keep your filthy paws off of Ahsoka. This figure has white areas that will pick up dirt and smudges 
easily. This is a heavy action figure. It's not like holding a Barbie doll. This thing has some mass to it. What I'm doing here is I'm just taking off this velvet cloth that's guarding her. I'm gonna take off all of the plastic coverings that were covering this action figure and all the plastic just slides right off. Let's go over the fine details of the figure itself. The detail in the head sculpt is amazing. And as a Kenner and Hasbro TVC collector, I'm used to figures having some detail, but not as much as this. So I'm blown away. Her face paint and the little skin textures are amazing. And it looks like a young Rosario Dawson, at least to me. Her Liku have amazing shape and detail to them as well, but I thought they would be more tractable. So we're gonna have to see how that plays when I try to pose her later on. She also has a nice weather headband running across her forehead. The detail in her armor and clothing is what blew me away as well. Looking at her garment underneath, which is a dark blue synthetic mesh material with silver screen printed designs on them. Her belt and midsection armor, however, have amazing detail and weathering in them. Some nice pitting and her armor is fitted together with head heavy canvas material in her hip flexor area. On her upper thigh area are these peg coverings, which you can keep like this, or you can swap them out to the lightsaber pegs. It took me a little while to insert these as the holes are super tiny and you definitely need a lot of light to see where the holes line up. The lightsaber attaches to these pegs by removing a bolt from the lightsaber. I can see many collectors losing these small pieces down a vent or lost to the vacuum cleaner if dropped on the carpet. I have to be honest, it's a lot of little pieces. On her forearms, the gauntlets do tend to move around and slide down when trying to pose the figure, so you'll have to pay attention to how those are laying on her arm. But looking at her arm, there is no visible joints, and this is my first figure I have with that feature. A lot of the times I've seen jointless figures at toy shows and it looks like they have noodle arms, but this one has muscle definition and a lifelike shape to it, so that's great attention to detail. Moving down to her legs, they are covered in a spandex-like material. And moving down to her knee and shin guards, which, like her gauntlets, are weathered, her shin guards are held in place with an elastic band that wraps around the back of her legs. She has black pleather boots with her metallic weathered armor covering the tops of her foot area. And on the bottom of the boot, some nice detail in the heel and stitching in the sole with the Hot Toys and LFL stamps on the bottom. I guess let's check out the articulation. So let's start with the head first. Her head has a ball joint where her neck and head meet. And there's also a ball joint at the base of the neck. But because of her Liku, it really prohibits movement. You can also move her Liku to a desired position as there's wires inside. So if that makes posing her easier, we're gonna find that out later. And using this little tool that comes in the box, we can remove her face, use the tool to adjust her eye placement, and then put her face back on with a magnet grip. Oh, that's so weird. You can, can oh, I'm making her cross-eyed, which is not good. <laughs> yeah, let's not make our Jedi cross-eyed. I am no Jedi. And just to note that you have to adjust the eye sockets separately. So if you want to, you can make her cross-eyed if that's what you're going for. Her arms have nice movement up and down, front and back, and a butterfly joint at the shoulder. There's good bend in her elbow with a swivel in the elbow joint as well. And you also have swivel in her wrist as well as it's on a swivel peg attached to her hand. Her torso is gonna move slightly forward and back and side to side. Her legs move out into the splits, move forward and back, and there's a swivel joint at the hip. At her knee, it has a ratchet joint that bends all the way in pretty far. And at her ankle is a double ball peg for nice foot movement. We're actually gonna put her hood on and see what that looks like. But I was reading the instructions and it said that you should not leave this hood on for long periods of time or else it will stain this figure. Because Ahsoka's Leku and Montrals, there's white on them, I'm guessing that if you leave these on for long periods of time, and it gets hot or it gets humid that it will stain the action figure. Remove the head from the neck and you have to use some force as the head is gripped on pretty tight. I'm guessing it just so yeah, the head just pops right off. So there's... Place the rear Liku inside the hood opening first and position the hood over the head. Then pop the head back on and using the wires both in the Liku and in the cape itself, adjust to the look that you want. Now let's see if we can get this looking like badass Ahsoka. And with the options to have this cape flow using the wires, you can get some pretty cool poses. All right, so we've gone over all of the accessories. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick our favorite lightsaber hands and we're gonna put her into an action pose. I 
kind of like the force hand. It looks more elegant. So now having taken this out of the box, having set it up, and having posed and played with it for a little while, here's my honest review. I think overall, the entire figure, the way it's built, the quality, the sculpt, the accessories, everything is so detailed, everything is so beautiful. From the scuffs that you see on the metal, to the material of the clothes, the fabric, the plastics, everything. There's so much detail and thought that goes into this. This just isn't a toy. This is a dream toy. It's a toy that I wish I had a long time ago. Now, here's the cons. This toy isn't for kids. It is not for small children. There's a lot of small parts that are gonna be missing as soon as you open that box. And there's so many interconnected hands and there's so many little nuances of posing and putting this figure together. Kids, if they were to play with this, they would break it in the first day. And even the instructions say, don't excessively bend. And at $250, I don't think you're gonna be buying this for your six or seven year old at all. But overall review, this is the top of the top of action figures that I've ever seen. The quality, the posability, the playability, the detail, it is all inside this package. So now the biggest question that I have, how do you display your figure and what do you do with the box? So thanks for going on this journey with me, discovering a new aspect of collecting in Hot Toys, learning a little bit about their history and helping me put together this absolutely breathtaking figure. So now we can cross this figure off our list that we got from Sideshow Collectibles for $250. And let me know in the comments if this episode helped you out and helped you decide if you wanna get a Hot Toys or not and also what's in store when you get a Hot Toys product. And if you already own sets of Hot Toys figures, which ones are your favorite? And if you don't own one, which one do you really wanna get? And if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. That does support the channel. And also, if you wanna see more Star Wars collecting content from me, please consider subscribing. And also, hit that notification bell if you wanna know when videos go live. I post videos every Sunday with bonus content like this throughout the week. And thank you for watching the Ahsoka Chronicles, where we explore the myth, the canon, the toys, and the future of Ahsoka Tano. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a paddle. I know Jedi.